Hey guys, Dread Fun here with another time lapse video upload. Uh, Mike Rita, stand up comedian, contacted me a while back to draw a picture for his CD cover or album cover. I don't know what they use anymore any day, uh, nowadays. So, uh, the concept itself, as you see, I'm starting to draw Mike's uh, head here. I found this image online of him uh, smoking a nice big fatty. He is uh, definitely a uh, weed accessible comedian, I guess is what you want to say. Uh, he's an advocate and all that. So um, it had to do with the 90s. He, uh, you know, child of the 90s was the theme, and I found this image and thought it would be best to do it in a comic book style. So you see, right now I'm laying everything out in pencil. Um, normally, I would actually just shut her down right here and start inking, but because I'm I'm filming it and uh, I want I want everyone to see what it is that I'm filming, I, I tend to make it a little darker. Uh, by that stage, I already know where everything is, and I might just do it light and then just ink over it. As you see, uh, I'm really just focusing on the pencils right now, where I'm going to put in the blacks, where I'm going to put in the hatching, and as you see, i got a big circle there where we're going to put a bunch of stuff spilling out of Mike's head. Um, I thought it would be cool to put a bunch of uh, 90s themed things, like uh, as you see, a Pokeball, a Blockbuster video, uh, I mean, we even put Pikachu in there, and some Gak, and a Game Boy. And while the image is awesome, uh, when he was trying to get it uh, produced, uh, <laughs> a lot of copyright issues. So the wife and I had to work together to uh, sort of make a, a modified version of this without so many recognizable characters spilling out of his head. So Pikachu becomes a teddy bear. and Rabbit. A rabbit, or whatnot. And, and, and we changed it up a bit. But for, for the time-lapse video... Uh, we're going to keep it all in. So, again, uh, uh, more or less, I am just penciling this for uh, for the sake of the video, darkening it, darkening it up. Normally, uh, like I said, again, I'm kind of a broken record. I would uh, actually just sort of ink over most of this without doing the finer dark detail, but uh, for the sake of those at home and those watching and seeing how I lay stuff out, uh, it makes a difference. Uh, another key thing is like I made sure I had my measurements down where where Mike's nose and eye and mouth ratio is going to be and then the hand. So basically I just have a, a, an image off to the side of Mike smoking the joint. Uh, and I thought it was uh, cool as you see when I'm adding this hatching and when I'm doing the ink. Um, it's very, uh, all that hatching down by the knuckles I'm going to then paint over and it's going to add a lot of tone to it. Um, I don't concern myself much with the smudging as you see going on there with my hand. If I'm inking it, I tend to go across and I already know what I'm going to do so I don't worry too much about it. I do worry a lot about it when I'm doing realistic pencils and you'll see I'll put like a piece of paper down or something and sort of help block it out. Uh, again, I'm just a lot of pen work here, a lot of line work is what I'm doing. Um, you can see where I roughly detail some of the pencil and I'm now putting in the inks with the pen. Now what pen is it you use, Mr. Dreadfun? Yeah, I use a Micron uh, 0503 and a 01. Uh, for this one, I'm doing everything kind of backwards again because, uh, well, not, it's the way I do it. Uh, I ink everything with a pen, then paint, and then I go over it again with a brush. It's not the only way I do things, but um, just it's a signature style that adds a lot of pop, makes the blacks sort of come right off the page and the colors sort of blend in. You'll see as, it, as I start to do it. Right now it's really just using a lot of references off to the side and going back and forth and making sure that I'm inking everything and adding in the hatching because a lot of the hatching that you see right down there by Mike's ear that's going to be uh, darkened with paint later and uh, sometimes I do it that way other times I'll just darken it with the, the paint. It just depends. For this I want it to go with a really uh, a cool comic book type image. Um, now I'm doing the title work there, something that I do a lot with commission work. I, I don't normally do it. It's not my most favorite thing to do, letters, but uh, I do with them. And, uh, you know, I, I do a similar approach. I'm sort of using uh, kind of a, 
line grid to put all the letters in. Um, I think I found a couple different uh, letter sort of templates off to the side and I, you know, this isn't exactly copied, it's not exactly custom, sort of a mix and match. And then I go ahead and I, I, again, inking it with my pen, my Micron. With a lot of these ones, I'm using my 05 because it's the thickest one that I use. And here we are. I am now going in with watercolor paint. Um, all the ink that I use is waterproof, so you notice that uh, when I'm adding that, there's no blending or bleeding of the ink. It stays there. And one of the cool things is as I'm adding the thicker parts there, you can see around his cheek and where the hatching is, um, I will then come back after that dries and add a darker layer and it just sort of builds up on it and when I do finally add the, the dark black ink at the end again, mwah, it's going to look good. Um, here I am just making sure that uh, I'm putting in all the colors. Um, one thing I try to keep in mind for those young artists at home uh, when I do my watercolor or paint with ink there's a there's a time in between where um, you know you can add more and you, you shouldn't depends on what kind of effect you're going for if you want more of a clean cell line you want to wait until that's completely dried and then add another layer um, if you don't if you want it to sort of blend in you can wait until parts of it are dry add some of the paint and the water later on um, again just it, it, it's tough because I'm also I'll have my paint palette ready and as I'm painting, you'll notice I'll paint certain areas and then come back. And that's all because I'm waiting simply for this stuff to dry. It's very difficult to film and paint and do it all. Uh, luckily, I've done like 500 plus videos, so the wife and I are getting pretty good at this whole combo thing. <laughs> Again, it's like, you see, I'm adding the purples now. So I'll know later on that I, I think, I, I, I can't even remember, but I will be adding some some darker grays and stuff, and I'll save that towards the end. Really, I want to I want to make sure. Like you'll notice, I have Pikachu in the corner with the the, the troll doll. I do not want my uh, yellow watercolor paint to bleed into the pink of the hair. So I got to make sure one is dry before I go ahead and add the watercolor paint to the other. Something people that use with uh, pencil crayons and markers don't really have to worry about but it's something that I have to be conscientious of when I'm doing these paintings. Now we're coming up to uh, almost the end here. Uh, I'm just adding little bits of paint uh, where I want to. You see uh, I've started painting in the beard with some browns and some uh, sort of uh, like chestnut browns with some blacks and grays mixed in. My favorite gray is Payne's gray. Um, <laughs> I like using it. It's a nice blue steel like gray. Now here, um, I'm actually, this gray is uh, my ink that I've mixed with a watercolor, or mixed with water, and it turns into almost like a watercolor. You'll see that when you use the watercolor paper, it leaves certain kinds of uh, effects on it, and it's really cool when you can pull it off. Sometimes it gets a little tough. Unfortunately, I didn't turn the camera on at that point, and we missed a little bit of me uh, starting the final ink, but you can see. Uh, right up top where the Walkman is inked and now I'm inking in the, those areas of the hand and you see what I was talking about earlier in the video that it's really it's gonna pop off the page um, I will then go in and again by the eye because it's clouded with that watercolor paint I don't have to worry about that as much when I'm using uh, like my Doc Martin inks but again if I'm using my Doc Martin inks it changes the texture and the look of the whole overall final image you can see my camera coming in there because I load these things up to Instagram all the time. Uh, yeah, it, it's really just finishing it off with blacks. That's all I'm doing right now. I've got everything done and all those areas that I've laid out with little X's are now going to get filled in with black. Uh, I don't do any uh, darkening in and around the circle, just the individual uh, 80 or individual 90s characters that are popping out, out of his head. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of paint to the child of the 90s. Um, I was really focusing on like pastel type colors. Uh, primitive, like everybody had those with the flare up hair back in the 90s. <laughs> so yeah, you know, some pinks and blues and yellows. And then uh, I do believe that, uh, yeah, that's about it. I then add a final inking. This is tough. You'll notice that I pulled the paper up. And it's something that I do in a lot of my later videos where when I'm inking with my brush, I'll actually pull the paper up and uh, really focus on uh, being able to spin and turn my wrist because you can only go so far with your wrist when you're holding a pen or a brush. Uh, I mean, 
if you wanted to, you can hold it in a different way. Anyways, hope you guys like this. I know Mike did. I know uh, a lot of folks. It was even on some uh, weed grinders and stuff, so that's cool. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, pass the video on, and uh, hit that notification button so you can be made aware of when a new Dread Fun video is out. Dread Fun, out. This has been a DreadFun.com production. Thanks for watching.